Hello, this video is for anyone who works or wants to work in a college or university in China. I'm going to share with you 12 tips that can help make your classroom the best classroom ever. Now, you might think, ha, 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 why should I believe you? Well, I've been teaching at um, colleges and universities in China for three and a half years, and I just want to share my information to help you and to help your students as well. So let's begin. Tip number one, ask your students to choose an English name and to make a name card. Now, you might think, but they should use their Chinese names. If your Chinese pronunciation is on point, then sure, learn Chinese names and use them. But for me, my Chinese is yi ban ban, which means so-so. I can't learn Chinese names. I always say to my students, the only Chinese names I can say are the very, very easy ones, like Mei Mei or Wang Jingwei. I can't do difficult Chinese names, I just can't. I, ugh, my Chinese is horrible. So, I want to be able to call upon the students to ask them questions or to ask them to like move their desk or whatever. So I need to call them something. I don't want to be like, hey you or you, that's rude. So I ask them to pick English names and to make a name card and to put the name card on their desk at the beginning of every class and then I can begin to learn their names. Um, I have approximately 300 students a semester. I'm not going to learn 300 Chinese names. It's just too difficult for me and my limited Chinese. But I can learn approximately 200 or so English names because I already know the names. I just have to put it to a face. Much easier. And it makes it more personal. And I've had students say to me they like how I learn their names. And, um, you know, I can when I walk past them on campus, I'll be like, hey, Bob. Hey, Sarah. You know, it's more friendly and nice, um, and because I have so many students, I'm just not going to memorize Chinese names, it's too hard for me. Tip number two is to get a class monitor. Most classes will already have a monitor. If not, ask someone to volunteer to be the monitor. And the monitor is there to help you and to help the students. The monitor will do things like send out homework reminders to the students. They will also do some printing for you if they if you ask them. Don't worry about money because they will also collect the money for printing from the students. And also I ask my class monitors to look after the name cards and bring them to class each week. I found if I ask the students to look after their own name card they forget to bring it. So I just ask the monitor to do, do that. Monitors are invaluable. Highly recommend you get a monitor. Most people um, will um, enjoy doing it anyway because they get to talk to you a bit more. Maybe you can meet for lunch one day. Um, you know, treat them to lunch or something because they're helping you out. Up to you. Me, I can't live without monitors. They're invaluable. Tip number three, be prepared for IT failure. It will happen at least once a semester. Um, it will be your computer doesn't switch on or it's very slow, the, um, mono the projector doesn't work, um, maybe the audio isn't working, something will fail you. It always happens at least once a semester. You have to always prepare a non-computer dependent lesson plan. Every time I step into the class, I have my computer lesson plan, like I'm going to use PPT, I'm going to use video, I'm going to use audio, but I also have a plan where if the computer fails, the class can still continue. Because I have a hundred minute classes, um, I can't waste 36 people's time, so I have to be prepared, and I recommend that you're prepared as well. Also, warn the students. If your students have to prepare presentations, tell them you should prepare your presentation for if the computer fails. I've had students, um, you know, freak out when the PPT, PPT doesn't work or when the video doesn't work. That happens every week, you know? So you need to be prepared and you need to tell your students to be prepared if they ever do a presentation in class as well. Tip number four, be aware that your students will have a heavy workload, especially postgraduate students. They have many classes which can start as early as 8 a.m. and run until 9 or 9.30 p.m. and they often get a lot of homework. So keep that in mind and be really kind to your students. Try not to give them too much homework, especially no unnecessary homework. And also try, and this comes into tip number five, 
Try and make your classes fun. Have a nice warm-up activity at least in the beginning. If the whole class can't be a fun activity, at least make the first five minutes of class fun. I recommend warm-up activities such as Rock, Paper, Scissors, World Cup. That's a really good one. Or Heads or Tails. Or even it can be a song like the Watermelon Song. I'm going to put a link down below with all my favourite warm-ups. But basically, at least the first five minutes of class, make it fun. It wakes them up, it helps their brain to start thinking in English and um, yeah, it just makes them feel more positive if they've had a really heavy day of classes. Tip number six, and this one I think has been a really interesting observation I've made. There's a big difference between my morning classes and my afternoon classes. Funnily enough, I can have the same lesson plan, but in the morning the activities will go a lot quicker. Whereas in the afternoon, the activities overrun and I'm running out of time by the end of class. So in the morning, the students, I think because they're tired, they just get through the activity quicker. They're like, come on, let's get it over with. <laughs> they're not so talkative, they're just doing what they have to do. Um, so I tend to run short. My lesson will be five or ten minutes short. So what I have to do is either extend my activities or have one more activity for my morning classes. Whereas in the afternoon, oh my goodness, I'm overrunning. My classes are five or ten minutes late. So what you need to do there is shorten your activities or have fewer activities. Because in the afternoon, the students are more lively, they're talking more. So yeah, definitely be aware of the difference between morning classes and afternoon classes. Tip number seven is you might find a lot of your students have visual impairments. So you need to be very considerate of this when you're making your PPT or when you're making your handouts. Make sure your text is big enough for them to read. And also think about um, color blindness and the colors you're using on your PPT. Tip number eight, if you don't have a standard American or, or British accent, then you might need to talk more slowly, especially at the beginning of semester. Students have complained um, to my colleagues who are Scottish that they don't understand what they're saying um, when they talk quickly. So slow down. Even me, I think I have quite a standard English accent. I speak much more slowly at the beginning of semester and I just start to speed up in the middle of semester. Um, I never go full native talking speed with them when I'm on stage. Uh, when I'm on stage, I at, literally actually at the, at the front of the classroom there is a stage. The lectern is on the stage which is funny. Anyway, um, so yeah I have a teaching speed and this isn't my teaching speed, this is my normal speed more or less. Um, so yeah, have a teaching speed and it will help them, um, otherwise you'll get complaints anyway, so just talk at a slower speed, especially at the beginning of semester. Um, if it's September, um, then, I mean, they've had the whole summer holiday not speaking English, not having any English lessons, so they would just be like, oh my god, what's going on? <laughs> so, especially at the beginning of semester, speak more slowly. Tip number nine, ban your students from speaking any Chinese in class, especially if they are not English majors, because it's likely they have very, very few English classes. In fact, my students, they're not English majors, they're science majors, and they only have two English classes a week. That's it. So they have to maximise their time in class because it's the only time where they're guaranteed to be speaking English. So I make sure that we only speak English. I can't speak Chinese anyway. And um, I say to them, if you get stuck, you can ask your colleague or your neighbour to help you in Chinese, but otherwise no Chinese. I do let them use dictionaries on their phones or laptop or iPad or whatever, but I just say no Chinese unless it's absolutely necessary. Otherwise, they just chat away in Chinese. Usually at the beginning of semester, class number one, they start talking Chinese and I let it slip a little bit because it's class number one. But after class one, I'm like, nope, no Chinese. <laughs> 
tip number 10, Chinese students are known for being a little bit shy and it's understandable there's um, a phenomena in China called face and face basically means nobody enjoys being publicly embarrassed which is a common worldwide phenomena it just has a name in China and it's face so people want to save face they want to not be embarrassed publicly so for example students could be very shy for raising their hand and answering questions so what you need to do is ask them to share with their partner or to share in a group first and then you can ask them to share publicly they'll be more confident because they've already shared with one other person also you might need to adapt some activities activities in the UK where you would say mingle and speak to other people doesn't happen in China they don't know what mingling is they're not very confident mingling so what you should do instead is snake so you can ask the students to snake around the classroom I'll try and explain it as clearly as possible but basically your students will be sat down in their chairs and we have desks where there are two desks next to each other uh, aisle two desks and aisle two desks so the students on the outside will move one chair forward every time you ring the bell for example so they change partners every minute it could be for a game like get to know you bingo it works perfect for that um, yeah so basically students don't get up and mingle you can just ask them to um, change seats by snaking around the classroom that's the best way i found tip 11 why don't you ask your students if they want to come to lunch or dinner with you it's very popular with some students they really want to speak to foreigners um, they want to make a foreign friend so if you have time and you want to maybe learn more about Chinese food in your canteen go hey does anyone want to come to lunch with me today and one or two people will say yes usually you should never hang out with students alone you should have a colleague with you or there should be multiple students uh, I think that's just good practice um, but yeah it's a good way for them to practice their English and it's also a good way for you to maybe discover new food you can ask them to introduce you to the food at the canteen maybe you don't know maybe you don't speak Chinese and you don't know what's on offer so they can help translate the menu for you and um, you can ask them some questions about what they're studying and they can ask you questions about your home country it can be quite an interesting cultural exchange tip number 12 under no circumstance discuss politics um, the politics of any country it's not necessary um, when somebody's studying English they don't need to learn politics at the same time just stick to teaching them English don't try and teach them anything else <laughs> um, yeah just don't go there tip 13 almost on a similar thread um, don't force Western holidays don't emphasize them too much I try and keep it to a minimum if I do talk about Halloween or Christmas I don't make it a lesson I make it a five minute warm-up activity so for example I'll play hangman near, uh, near Halloween I think that's quite cool or I'll do Pictionary because they do know a lot of Halloween terminology vocabulary um, like candy skeleton monster pumpkin so I think that's pretty good for uh, Pictionary um, Christmas I will do a quick secret Santa um, but I won't make it take up the whole class it will be uh, five minutes it will be a really good secret Santa game that I love I'll put it down below um, it's called Christmas with the right family um, so yeah don't um, harp on about holidays Western holidays because some of the holidays are controversial like Halloween some people um, are misinterpreting Halloween usually in England it's just about food and having a you know trick-or-treating but people have started to think it's connected to um, pagan stuff it's like yeah in the old days but not now but you know people don't quite get that so don't harp on about it and Christmas is obviously a Christian holiday and um, you don't want to be seen as like promoting religion so um, don't harp on about Christmas either now that you have lots of tips on how to succeed in a classroom in a college or university in China you might be interested in my other videos I have a video about how to find a teaching job in China I have another video about contracts and what you should look out for on a teaching contract 
and if you have any questions about anything please leave them below maybe there's a warm-up activity you want to share with me I'm always looking for new warm-up activities please put it below otherwise thank you very much for watching this video bye